Good. We thank God for bringing us to the close of this week. Yesterday, if you remember what we learned about, we talked about what? Planning and... Yes, it was a planning, but planning and something. Should I bail you out? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was planning. Planning and what? Okay, so if you don't remember, I'm going to repeat what I said yesterday. I repeat everything since you don't remember. So should I repeat? Okay. To so recap of the week's announcement. So we'll put all of them together. So yesterday we talked about planning and relying on God's will. Planning and relying on God's will. Now yesterday we we're trying to look at the importance of planning, why we have to plan. Is it necessary for us to plan? But whilst we are planning, we don't neglect the will of God, that God has a will for us. Today, what we are going to talk about is closely related to what we spoke about yesterday. Now, we'll narrow it down to Mary's dedication to God's plan. Mary's dedication to God's plan. Now, yesterday, what we looked at was Mary's own plan and God's plan for Mary. These are two different things. Mary's own plan and God's plan for Mary. So when Mary got to know God's plan, she has to dedicate herself to it. That's what we are talking about today. That Mary's dedication to God's plan. Hence, our dedication to God's plan. Beloved, what does it mean? to dedicate oneself to something. If somebody say, I am dedicated, I am fully dedicated to this, I am dedicated to this course, what does that mean? To dedicate simply means to devote. And what does it mean to devote? To dedicate. Is that not it? To commit. To be loyal. To accept something and ready to put in all that you have, putting in all the effort. So to, de to devote oneself is to devote, if you like, to set aside one's time and energy to a particular task or purpose. In other words, we are saying Mary devoted her time and her energy to God's plan. Beloved, today, what we are going to talk about is to let us know that God has planned for everything. God already has planned for everything. Now, even though yesterday we talked about the fact that there's a need for us to plan our lives, we are doing so not neglecting the will of God. That if our plan agrees with God's will, then so be it. But whereas we do our plans, we are still open to God's will for us. Yes, I want to be a priest. But if it is God's will that I am not a priest, so be it. Well, I want to be a married man. But if it is God's will that I am not a married man, so be it. We gave so many examples of prophets who did not want to do the will of God, but God has to force them to do His will. And we looked at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. That yes, ask the Lord to bless your plans and you will be successful in carrying them out. In verse 9, he says, God will direct your actions. If you put your plans before him, he will direct your actions in order to accomplish them. Beloved, God has planned for everything. We, we know of what we call the salvation plan of God. God's own plan for salvation in order to redeem humanity. And in that plan, he has given each and everyone a specific role. If we read from the Old Testament, it is very clear how certain people had their roles designed for them already by God from birth. And Psalm 119 will attest to that, that from my mother's womb, you form me. From my mother's womb, you knit me together. You put me together in my mother's womb and you even know what I will do. Our plan is in the hands of God. If we are able to discover our plans from God's will, 
we are we will be at the top so that if we, we are able to know our plan that this is what god has designed for us to come into the world to do there's no need to there's no if you like um, you're not going to take chances or okay or try try and error there's no try and error now let me try this and see if it works let me try this and see if it works no because it is clear to you and you know that this is what God wants me to do. And in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it looks like everybody or most of the prophets had their roles already designed. It looks like that. So that if you look at the life of Samson, he said, this, this one is a special child. He is going to be a judge. And through him, Israel will win that, that, that battle. That he's going to bring them back to Samson. Samson's rule was defined. Isaiah's rule was defined. Jeremiah's rule was defined. Moses' rule was defined. God called and gave a specific task. This is what I want you to do. That is why you are called Moses. Drawn out of water. You have been drawn out, given a certain privilege, because God is going to tap on that privilege that you go back and draw your people out of slavery. And so his, his purpose has been set down for him. So irrespective of the plans he had, at the point he has to know that, no, I have to follow the plan of God for me. And we gave the example of Jonah too yesterday. That Jonah had his own plan, but God has already designed a plan for Jonah. This is the path I want you to walk on and so no matter how he runs and goes up and down god says this is what i have designed for you beloved in the new testament we can also point fingers to the apostles the apostles we know some were fishermen and they had their own plans they have mastered the art of fishing they were doing their own things and jesus came and said now you have now been chosen According to the plan of God, you are to follow the Messiah, learn from the Messiah, then you will propagate the word. And so we see a change of course. I'm not sure that they ever dreamt and thought that they will at a point follow the, the, the master or the son of God and be preaching. And Jesus will tell them that from now on, says from now, you will become fishers of men. You will not fish for fish, but you will fish for men. There's a change in their plan. That was never part of their plan. They never dreamt that this would be their plan. In the life of John the Baptist, when John the Baptist was giving birth to, his role was clearly assigned. In fact, the mother was told by an angel, you are not supposed to drink wine because this child is a special child. And when the child is grown, no razor must touch his hair. He must be a Nazarite. Nothing must touch his hair. Allow him. The same way was said to Samson. Allow this child to grow. The same thing was said to Hannah. Because this child has been set apart. This child has God's plan to do this and to do that and to do that. And so for such a person, their roles were defined. So right from the beginning, John the Baptist will go and accomplish and, and do according to what God has designed for him. Mary, in a like manner, was already prepared by God. And God's plan for Mary was already carved that she would be the woman to give birth to the Savior and no one else. Just like the first woman in the Garden of Eden, even though God had a plan for her, God still allowed her to exercise her free will. The free will which Eve, in the, first, in the Garden, did not exercise well, but they disobeyed God with it. That this is all for you. My plan is that you stay here forever, but don't touch this. Do you agree? Okay, go ahead. Out of that same free will, she disobeyed God. But Mary, the new Eve, was also given the same chance. 
Well, you have been chosen to be the mother of the Savior. Do you agree? Are you ready? Let it be done unto me as God has planned for me. We also realize that in the life of Jesus, when Jesus was giving birth to, we are told that he was dedicated in the temple. And Simeon looked at the child and he saw the purpose of this child in this world, that this child will be the rise and fall of many. And woman, I'm sorry to say, that the sword, the sorrow of this child will also pierce you. You will also go through the same pain. The plan that God has designed for this child, the sorrow or the pain cannot pass away without touching you. You will also go through the same thing. Beloved, Mary had to forgo all her plans. The young, beautiful, innocent girl was waiting to get married to her husband, had to forgo all her plans and now follow that plan that God has dedicated for her to take care of the Son of God. Beloved, the truth is that each and every one of us have a plan carved out for us by God. What is left for us to do is to dedicate ourselves to that plan. I think our difficulty in today's world is knowing exactly what God wants us to do. That is our challenge and our difficulty. So the basic question is, that, Father, what is God's will for me? What does God want me to do? Am I doing God's will? I want to do God's work. How do I know I'm doing God's work? I want to do this, I want to do that. How do I know that I am following the will of God? Like Jeremiah, like Isaiah, like Jonah, like Moses, like Mary, these people heard the voice of God telling them, go, move, do this. You are going to give birth to a child. Why can't I hear any voice talking to me, Father? Father, I want to hear a voice talking to me. The voice directing me that, go to Tesco Market, start spreading the word of God. Hello? Is that not what you are looking for? Oh no. A voice will say, I don't want to use anybody's name. Speak to you. Wake up. Take your Bible. Go to Tespo. Start preaching. Oh no, no, no. Go to Ashama Market. Start preaching. And our time, it seems like we don't, we don't hear things like that. Rather, we sleep and we see a black fowl chasing us. Black and red cats. Black body cat and a red, red colored head chasing us in the night. We dream and we see some crows standing on top of our roof. We don't hear Jesus speak to us today. We don't hear the Holy Spirit speak to us today. So many of us are confused. Father, what is the plan of God for me? What does God want me to do? Am I doing what God wants me to do? Is this what God wants me to do? How then can we be dedicated? How can we devote our time and energy? Beloved, reading through scripture, I came across Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. In another text, Luke chapter 10, verse 27, saying the same thing. It says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. But love the Lord your God with everything. Dedicate your time, dedicate your energy, dedicate your intellect, dedicate your desire, dedicate your spirit, dedicate your health, dedicate everything to God. You must always know, like I've said before, if you remember in this church, that every work is the work of God. 
I hope you remember that every work is the work of God. And whatever work you find yourself doing is a way to reach out to somebody with the good news. Every work is the work of God. Depending on how you do it, you can't be preaching the word of God. You can't be preaching about the kingdom to someone. What is important is dedicating your time, loving what you are doing, your mind, your heart, your everything. It looks like one thing that is, that is missing in our time is our love for God. As to whether we truly love God with all our minds, with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our in- intellects, I wonder, with the things that are happening to us these days, the things that are going on, I keep asking, do the Christians of today truly love God? Do we truly and truly and truly love God with our heart, with our mind, with our soul, with our everything? I keep asking ourselves, if the Christians of yesterday were still alive at our time, how would they handle the situation that we find ourselves in? At that time, it was sword, it was gunshot, it was spear and arrow, and they stood and they would defend it and they would die for it. Today, it is just social media, it's just pen and paper, it is just standing before a camera and a Wi Fi and you make your, your mind known. Speak the truth. How much love do you have for God? How much love do you have for the things that you do? What is God's plan in your life? Have you come to identify that? And are you going all out with your heart, with your mind, with your effort, with your money, with your time, with your energy? Today, when we put Christianity or spiritual exercise in a money venture or anything that will bring us money and spirituality down, we will give every reason why we can't attend that spiritual program but be at the other program because of what we shall get out of it. We shall give whatever reason, whatever reason we can give, not to be here, but to be there. I pray that just as Mary was dedicated, just as Joseph was dedicated, and just as the early apostles were dedicated to the word of God, our eyes may be opened to the reality that we may also be dedicated to that which God has entrusted into our hands, that we shall go all out and never relent in our actions to stop what is evil and what is not of God. May God bless and keep us all. Amen.